examples. I'm going to perform them in an easy way and then perform them a little bit more difficult way. So we have a car traveling 3.7 miles. We want to know how many meters is that. If you are using a, a physics book, uh, commonly they'll have a table of conversion factors. And in there, you would discover that there uh, is a conversion one mile is equal to a length of 1,609 meters. One mile is 1609 meters. So the question is, how do we apply that to uh, 3.7 miles to end up with meters? Uh, I'd suggest you write 3.7 miles divided by 1. You can divide anything by 1. It doesn't change its value. And as I write now the conversion factor, I see that I have miles in the numerator. My conversion factor must have miles in the denominator to cancel off miles. And that leaves me with 1609 meters in the top. And if you would use a calculator to uh, complete this calculation, and you'd find 5,900, I'm going to round off 50 mile, sorry, meters. So 5,950 meters. <coughs> a harder way would be to start with miles and convert to feet. 5,280 feet in a mile. Convert the feet into inches. 12 inches is one foot. Convert the inches into centimeters. There's an exact conversion. 2.54 centimeters is one inch. And then to meters, one meter is 100 centimeters. So in each case, we have numerator, denominator, same units. They will cancel and leaving us with meters. And when you do this, you get 59.55 meters. Close enough to uh, the answer here. I think this one was 59.53. Um, but I would suggest that you use the conversion factor you find in the book to save you some steps and possible errors in writing the conversion factor or errors in uh, using your calculator. The second one, 55 miles per hour. We want to convert that to meters per second. and Again, um, looking in a book, you'll find one mile per hour is equivalent to 0.447 meters per second. We have 55 miles per hour over 1 times 0.447 meters per second is one mile per hour. And using a calculator, you come up with uh, 24.6 meters per second. Doing this uh, the long way, I'm just going to write them out, 55 miles per hour, converting hours into minutes, minutes into seconds, now taking care of the miles, changing that into feet, um, so we have uh, 5,280 again, the 12 inches, and you can see this is pretty tedious. You do want to find that conversion factor table in your book and use that. And when we're done, we get the same answer. If I pull it back on screen. Uh, 24.6 meters per second. Last one, uh, time conversion. We've had a certain situation, 4.6 years has elapsed. How many seconds is that? And there is a conversion factor in uh, many books that tells you one year is the same as 3.156 times 10 to the seventh seconds. And to apply that, 4.6 years divided by 1, 3.156 times 10 to the seventh seconds is one year. And we end up with 1.45 times 10 to the eighth seconds. The harder way, 4.6 years. 
I can convert that into days, remembering that uh, we do have these leap years every fourth year. So it actually is, uh, and this isn't exact, but 365.25 days is one year. The time it takes the Earth to orbit the Sun. It's not an integer number of days. We've got the 0.25 that leads us to a leap year. So our seasons don't drift through the calendars. We don't end up with snow in July in Nebraska. Um, 24 hours for one day, 60 minutes for one hour, 60 seconds for one minute, and multiply those together and you get 1.45 times 10 to the 8th seconds. So it's useful to know these exist, these other conversion factors, but uh, most situations you save yourself a lot of time and avoid a lot of errors if you use the conversion factor that's been provided in your book. So practice some more with those. Ask your instructor if you have questions.